Previously on Drake Paragon. You've been up Signal Hill, right? No. The sightseeing. That's the periscope out of a German U boat. It's called Signal Hill because it's where they signaled the ships. Come on in, the water's fine. That's what it used to look like. They had an avalanche down here and it wiped two or three houses out into the harbor. There's at least one or two vessels that winter here. Only beer in the world made pure iceberg water. Okay, now we're leaving town. That's a whaling ship. That's right where it sank. Hey! pieces of property now. The price of real estate has gone ballistic. Yeah, we've huh. heard that the housing market here has just gone through the roof. Why do you think that is? Oil. Uh, the magic three letter word. Mm. This was a cow path here when I was a youngster. I used to come out here and cut Christmas trees. How cool. But now since they put in the marine science lab, this is now a fairly well-traveled thoroughfare for them. University marine biology crowd. When they first built it, they used to call it the alien landing pad because they got the flying saucer out here. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Wow! This is so good. Wow, striking. Yeah. Uh, okay. No, you I see, see what you mean. <laughs> yeah, that's Jeez. so cool. <laughs> Movie up there, do you think? What's that? Right up there. Oh wow, I see them there. I think they're making a movie. It's movie time. I thought it was a religious thing because they looked <laughs> like they had robes. if we can borrow their camera equipment. No one would notice us with that setup, eh? No. <laughs> yeah, they have that enormous crane with the camera on the end. We could have that. <laughs> There's always seemed to be a small shallow pool. You'd run into the ocean, you'd freeze, and then, <laughs> then you'd jump out and jump into the freshwater pool. It felt like it was bath water. Yeah. You can see the brook running in down there. Yeah. The big house. Yep. That's owned by the former premier of Newfoundland, Danny Williams. Looks like a really nice house. The water's so clear. Oh, yeah. I wonder if the whales come up in here. It's a little bit like Scotland. We were considering spending the winter in Scotland. <laughs> you think too cold, huh? As long as you have enough scotch. <laughs> a good single malt letting. Until modern times, the only way to get to all these communities around the coast of Newfoundland was by boat. Yeah. And there's still Lakes communities on the south coast that you can't get to today, even, except by boat. Oh, you'll see a lot of U.S. flags now. Oh, the U.S. Army killed in action. Huh. 
This house is owned by an American who fell in love with the place, bought the property, expanded it. And then his buddy came up and bought this house and <laughs> fixed it up. <laughs> Do a lot of Americans live permanently in Canada? Oh, quite a few. I'm huh. surprised. This was quite the fishing place. Of wow. They hauled the boats out of the water oh, right yeah, here. You still see This is the spot where the Pope came. Oh, really? The Pope came here and blessed the fleet. And all the boats came from all over the place. And he stood right here. The site of the blessing of the fleet by His Holiness Pope John Paul II. It's so nice to get off the boat. <laughs> See all this green before two weeks of blue and gray and white. Yeah. Now you talk about a hole in the wall, huh? <laughs> yeah. Just enough room for just a few fishermen. Yeah. Wow. The fishing boats here are decorated. Yes. So much more than I've seen anywhere else. They really put a lot into it. And usually they have the family name over the wheel. That's fairly common. There was an iron ore mine on Bell Island for a long, long time. They closed it down when more resources became available in Labrador. They couldn't make it profitable. Huh. But the mine goes seven miles out under the ocean. It's all flooded now once they stopped using it and during the war there were iron ore ships torpedoed by the Germans over there. There's one of the Bell Island ferries now. It looks like he's heading back to St. John's because he's got mechanical problems of some sort. Huh. How do I know that you ask? How do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> because I saw him in the port of manuals and the only reason they ever go in there except for running back and forth to Bell Island is there's a problem. Huh. So. If he was there this morning and he's not on the run, he's heading that way, that means he's going to St. John's. For it's called logic. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever dried kelp and eaten it? I haven't. Have you? Yeah, oh yeah. Is it good? Very salty. They uh, mass produce it and sell it by the bag in New Brunswick. and It's called dults. 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 You can dry it out and you can eat it. It's edible. Huh. It doesn't taste too bad. Chewy. So you're talking about this? Not that stuff, no, the flat, no. The flat leafy stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like this here. See the flat leafy stuff? I see. I wonder what it must be like to live here and work on a fishing boat out of here. And if all the days were like this, it'd be great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's a typical windlass here to haul the boats up the slip. Oh, yeah. They don't still use them, do they? Or do they? they use those, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's more flavorful than the commercial kind. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. It just takes too many to make a meal though. <laughs> They're strong. It's growing wild. All right, let's go. <laughs> That's right where it sank. Oh, is that a wreck? Yep. That's a whaling ship. That's right where it sank. My goodness. 
Now you can tell the water gets deep really quickly, judging by the angle. <laughs> yeah. When did it sink? I'm not sure. I suspect it was back in the 60s. The ship Charcot was built in Norway in 1923. She was 117 feet long and weighed 212 tons. She was one of five whaling vessels which were based out of Conception Bay in the 1960s. In 1970, Charcot broke from her moorings during a storm and was pushed ashore. For the past 48 years, she has rusted away in this spot. There are also two other whaling vessels, which lay on the sea floor, completely submerged, just behind Charcot. There was an old ship then, you can tell by the riveted plates. Yeah. Not welded. Riveted. Riveted, yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah, look at that. It's got the thing. Oh, we have the onward call. Onward! <laughs> Woo! Two, three! I found a couple of shells. Oh, you found some shells? Yeah. You found some shells? I did. I, uh, I, Can I send see? my mom shells from every new place. I go, mm -hmm. shells are a rock. Thomas and Martin. Yeah. <sighs> the wild horse pub and eatery. Touristy thing to do. I am a tourist. <laughs> A light gold lager made with 25,000-year-old iceberg water. Wow, 100% of the water comes from an iceberg. iceberg. In that iceberg. And it's a blue I'm supposed to remind you of the iceberg. Yeah, it's right, because... Mm -hmm. Wow. Have you ever seen them? You've been up close to an iceberg and you look at the underwater part through the water. The tables and all that other good stuff, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. It's got good body to it, doesn't it? I think that's the best beer I've ever tasted in my life. <laughs> so how long did you fly? You, for the 25 whole years. 25 years? Yeah. Still alive, too. Totally. Uh, yeah. As you probably know, it's still alive. <laughs> I certainly hope so. Were there, were there... Yeah, I got a lot of friends who weren't. <laughs> yeah, how, like through accidents? 37 accident? I've buried since I was in the military. Through accidents and flying? Yeah, mostly their own damn fault too, unfortunately. Yeah. There's a few that they they didn't have a hope in hell. You know, it was not their day to get out of bed, but most of them, oops. Oops. The big oops factor. Did you ever have close calls when you were None flying? None I admit to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I did have a few over the years. Yeah. I almost ejected once. but. I got the aircraft back under control in time. Oh. Then I got in a lot of yeah. shit. Oh yeah? You got in trouble. Yeah, because I went back up to try again to see what the hell that was all about. No. I made the mistake of telling him I did that when I got back down. He <laughs> stupid asshole. He didn't think I should have done it. Uh -huh. But you wanted to go back up and figure yeah, out what happened. Uh, did Why I, did, did that I, happen? Maybe I screwed up here, but I don't think so, but I want to see what's wrong. So. The aircraft had an angle of incidence problem in the wings. It had just come out of maintenance. How it passed the test flight, I don't know, but I flew it after the test flight and it was checked out okay. So it wasn't. I got a friend of mine who took me out the test flight and he went schmuck. The, the ailerons, which is when the wing, turning the wings, which will allow you to turn like so. Yeah. After overhaul, the airplane was overhauled, both of them went the same way. They were cross-rigged. Oh. And he didn't pick it up before he took the airplane up. How or why he did it, I have no idea. Wow. He should, it should never have left the ground. He went flying with it. 
once he got airborne, he realized something was really wrong. So yes. went around, burned off fuel, burned off fuel, tried to see if he could do an approach and landing. He wasn't getting much control ability out of it. He didn't think he could land. So they finally decided they were going to eject. There was two of them. They had a backseater. The guy in the backseat ejected, and my friend went kaboom. The seat didn't work either. So now the ailerons were cross rigged. Had to check on the airplane, now the electrician seat didn't work. Oh my god. But his other mistake was he shut down the engine before he tried to eject and he was at too low an altitude. He could, oh my god. And he Three crashed. He made mistakes and he killed himself. He was trying to get the canopy off and unharness himself and hop out. Never happened. I guess it's really important to go through a big checklist on your plane before you take off. Yeah. Thank you. And, uh, I know. Poor guy. Vinegar on the fries in Canada. I'm a pepper guy. <laughs> I like pepper too. But what's a dock like throughout the summer? Do you lots of boats pull in there all the time? A fair number. Some will come in and spend overnight and gone. Some will speak in a day or two or three, some will come in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Some will say, hey, this is great, but uh, and they'll come around and stay at the Yacht Club. Yeah. Or the Fox Trap Marina. Everybody's different. Everybody yeah. does different things. Do boats stay on that dock at all over the winter time? No, they haul that out. They haul those floating docks out. Oh, out. so no boats are. Or... No, that, that place wouldn't be tenable in the winter. It wouldn't be. Well, you get we get gales constantly. <clears throat> Oh. You blow in there and rip the thing out of there. Oh. Are there many people living on sailboats in Newfoundland, like in marinas and things like that? Not at all. No. The only one I know of is the boat that was at the brewery. There was two sailboats there. Stayed the winter. That's about the only one I know of. Yeah. The wind really picks up over the winter. Oh yeah. Huh. You get the nasty storm. So you went to the Bahamas once on a sailboat before? Oh, I sailed. Well, through the Bahamas. I started on Salvador Island. That's the easternmost island. That's where Columbus supposedly landed. Did you have a favorite area? Uh, the Exumas. What's it like there? Nice. Not as much traffic. There's a lot of boats stick to the Abacos pretty well because you know it's close to the mainland. I got cigatera poisoning in NASA. Oh man! Really? It was mild, but I knew what it was because I could feel the numbness. Mm -hmm. From Conk. <laughs> from Conk? Conk. I didn't know you could get that from Conk. I didn't either. Wow. That's what I figured it was, could be the only thing. I had caught Conk out in the out islands and cleaned them myself. It takes a real skill to clean that thing. And if you sure. don't know it, it takes a long time to clean it. <laughs> yeah. I was fighting with this thing, trying to cut it. And you watch the local guys do it. Boom, boom, boom. Just like the old fishermen splitting codfish. Yeah. Boom, next. Yeah. Onward! A valiant. Yeah, Very nice. Nice. I like the valiant. Like, there's only one thing I don't like yeah. about a valiant and boats like it. I can't stand the prop shaft coming out and the prop is yep. exposed. Yep. Oh, I hate that. Yeah, me too. Hate it. The Coast Guard has a small station here. They keep an RIB to go roaring off. Royal Newfoundland Yacht Club. Yeah. I like where we are. Yeah, I, I mean, I love this area. It's just so beautiful, but I think we were better off in St. John's. To the big downtown. Yeah. For uh, Capital City, it's still pretty laid back and on Gotham style, like big cities tend to become yeah. too much of themselves. Yep. Irish, British. That's not Canada Irish. Land. That's not Is Irish. That no, no, Italian? No, no. no, that's the that's pink, white, and green. Oh, pink. pink. I that's, thought it was just that's faded. That's the original Newfoundland flag. Really? Yeah. Because I, I had thought know. that I'd seen one or two around and I was thinking, I mean... That you thought it was would, a faded Irish flag? I thought it was a faded Irish flag. I did. Flag. <laughs> wow. The seagulls are chasing me. You know what? Yeah. He's sardines. Not sardines. Cape one. Sometimes they come around our boat when we start to come in. Yep. One will come and the other's like, oh my god, he must see something. So we'll get a little bit of them and they'll be like, you suck. 
nothing good on this boat. How cool. That looks cold. <laughs> so what day do you think you're going to uh, cast off and head out? Probably just a few more days from now. Let's got to get groceries and some engine oil. I think we can get everything done in a few days. Then it's just a question of weather. Yep. I think we've decided not to go all the way to Nook. We talked to these French folks yesterday. Yep. And they highly recommended a different port in, in the southwest coast of Greenland called Hamut. Yep. And uh, Hamut's about 300 nautical miles south of Nook. So it'd be a lot shorter trip for us to okay. get there. And we're sort of getting concerned with our schedule for getting to Ireland right. by September 15th or, or earlier. How far north do you go wind up? Are you going all the way to Svalbard? Uh, to Svalbard? No, I don't think Svalbard? so. Svalbard? No. That's up, that's up quite a way. Yeah. No, no, we're no, actually we're, we're way, way south. south. And then after Greenland, then... Iceland. Uh, Reykjavik, Iceland. Reykjavik, Iceland. Yeah. Yeah. We don't exactly know where we're going to stay in Iceland or how much it's going to cost. We're hoping we can find a marina in Reykjavik. <laughs> and then, uh, There'll be a place there somewhere anyway. The big question we have is where to spend the winter, and we yeah. really wish we could stay in Ireland, but the more we talk to people about it, the more it, it seems that we won't be allowed to spend the winter in Ireland. We're limited to Our three months yeah. in any six-month period among all of the Schengen Agreement countries. Greenland's one of them. And Ireland's another, and Ooh. between the two, we're and Iceland. Iceland's also Schengen. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, so that's it. I think we're gonna go to a little tiny town of Falmouth in England on the south coast. I also hear that the water between Ireland and England, you know, in late September and October, just turns really bad. So we kind of want to avoid that. Well, it's gonna be an interesting trip anyway. That's for sure. Most definitely. I think for the winter, a really small, quiet, peaceful, slow-paced kind of <laughs> place would, would work out yeah. well for me with less distractions so I can focus on video yeah. editing. Well, what a lot of people do when they get to Ireland is they have the boat hauled out, put up on the herd, and fly back to the States for the winter, come back and... Yeah. Flash it up again, head out. Yeah. To the next leg. Yeah. Uh, I, I've lived year round since '95. I've never yeah. lived on land. So <laughs> it's, uh, Keep going. It doesn't work for me. I got, I got nothing on land. <laughs> Gosh, this is such an industrial first introduction to St. John's, which is nothing like what we got. We got such a nature point of view. We yeah. came in and there were whales and it was <laughs> the beautiful greenery. How about your lonesome? Huh? Well, more will come in, I'm sure. Wow. Yes, West Sale 42. I will keep in touch and when I get to Florida, you can come visit me there and I'll give you a tour of Florida. Yeah. You got it. I yeah. love that area too. <laughs> <laughs> We don't coordinate and you get out of here before Thursday then. Have a good trip. And Thank you. Uh, we'll keep tabs on you. All uh, right. There you go. I'll send you an email tonight. Great. I'm going to do a, a car hug. <laughs> good stuff. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. My Thanks. pleasure. Pass it on. We will. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> wow. What a nice guy. That was amazing. That was amazing. That was like the whirlwind tour. That was an eight tour. hour whirlwind tour of like the whole peninsula. I am amazed by you. Me? Yes. How yeah. How did you not like collapsed on your three I hours of sleep? On the, on the last like hour in the car, I was fading. I was, <laughs> I was phasing out there. I was like, I'm going to get him on video snoring away. <laughs> I was like, but I was like, ain't it, this guy is given up his day to drive you around movement land. You're not going to fucking sleep in his car. 
Newfoundland. Here's to Newfoundland. Here's to Craig. 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 He's like one of the coolest dudes around. 30 years as a jet fighter pilot. And what a charmer. And what a charmer. <laughs> Serious charmer going on. It's chilly today. It was very chilly. Maybe have a fire tonight. 